America's favorite hunting couple, Ralph and Vicki Cianciarulo. Hey, welcome to this week's Archer's Choice. And well, this week we got our posse members. They all went up to Tudelik Outfitters and they went hunting the caribou. Caribou. Yeah, there was Chad. There was Jr. Bill from Nikon went up there with them, mm -hmm. and, and uh, Chad's son Colin. And Colin. I mean, and and you know, first of all, to share that experience with your boy growing up. I mean, definitely, that's, that's awesome. But I think something that we have to let you know on, and that is, they were handed what norm the norm weather is up in caribou hunting, you know, whether you're at Tudelic, whether you're, well, no matter where you are, up, up in Quebec, and you're hunting caribou, you can be, you can be well, throwing a curve. Well, look at it this way. They went in mid-September. We went in mid-October. We had beautiful weather compared to their September weather. Yep, I mean, they, you know, one of the big things about that is, you know, you're going up on your caribou hunt in a, a hunt of a lifetime, and, well, that weather, the wind, the sleet, the snow, is going to play pretty Tough. Yeah. Not everything let's, let's get into our first hunt. J.R. Tucker, posse member. Yeah, we're, we're the heat. first caribou. Caribou. We're talking to Matthew here concerning caribou and ptarmigan and what we can eat, what on the caribou is edible, what the Inuits do, what the locals do for the vitamins and everything else. And we've got to record this because what he's telling us is very interesting. So I'm going to let him go ahead and ask him a few questions at least. But exactly what it is that they eat, how they get their minerals, and the whole nine yards, and a lot of the Inuit way, and what they've done. Well, on a caribou, you can eat just about anything, from the brains to the eyes. Uh, of course, you have the, the straps, the filet mignon. But uh, you can also eat, uh, to supplement the vitamins, uh, you can eat uh, the inside of the first uh, stomach, with the, a little bit of the lichen. Uh, when I was uh, a child, I've seen Inuit, you called that... What? That first stomach? Uh, yeah, well, when you open that first stomach, it, it looks like a book or a Bible. So they we would call that the Bible, and they'd rip the pages one by one, rinse them in water, but not too much, and then they'd eat that. Uh, what they were trying to get from that was what? Yeah, I'm sorry. Well, you get uh, vitamins. It's like a, the veggie, your veggies, and it tastes a bit like spinach with a lot of imagination. <laughs> And uh, you have uh, also the marrow. Um, I've seen Inuit, old Inuit women uh, boil the hoops and eat the hoops. Really? And uh, even I've seen that done and I've tried it myself when I was uh, quite young. Uh, in wintertime, you can, uh, when you skin the caribou, you find um, uh, fly larvae under the skin and uh, you, they would uh, pierce that and eat the, the live larvae inside. Really? And the Inuit would say that it would give them their uh, vitamins. And Matthew not only speaks French, but he also speaks English and Inuit. So we kind of want to get some of the Inuit translations for the animals we're going to see, the area we're going to be in, and just, you know, a little bit more information for ourselves if nothing else. So I'm going to turn this over to Matthew. He's going to give us the names of all the critters that we're going to see and what the area is called and what it translates as. Matthew. Well, uh, the region where you're going to go hunting is called Dumuya, which means uh, the place that resembles a boat. And uh, you're going to be hunting uh, caribou, so that's Tutuk. Uh, and you might see ptarmigans, which are called Akhikyuk. Uh, if you go fishing, you're going to go fishing for Ikhalukpik. Uh, you might see Nanooks, those are bears. It's uh, quite unlikely, but you might see them. And uh, you're going to be, uh, so you're going to be roaming around uh, the Nunak. Nunami Makhelangavusi. Uh, so that means uh, you're going to be hunting uh, in the tundra. Grab a snack. Archer's Choice will be back in two minutes. Thank you. 
You know what that was? That was Jared's arrow missing that guy. <laughs> <laughs> that was a try. You know, you gotta try. What, what are you gonna do? Hey, you know? Hey, we all miss, and that's part of the game. That's right. You know, I've come up with something. You know, I think missing really is so underplayed, and I think we, we have to make the statement very clear. You know, missing is truly an excellent thing. It's like catch and release, as close as you can But But not only that, Vicky, you have no tax or any bills. You have no butchering fees. You don't have to drag anything out. And when you get back to camp, if it's not on camera, you can turn around and say, I missed the biggest. It's a good thing I film all your hunts. It's going to be so hard and then so easy. We walked and walked and walked and worked for him yesterday, all day yesterday. We are within 20 yards, maybe 30 yards of the camp right now. All four of us started walking out. We spotted, walked up to the spruce, waited a f five minutes maybe. They worked their way right to us. It was just when it's good, it's good, and when it's real good, it's real good. Let's go get our boot. 
Welcome back to the Archer's Choice. Well, JR, you go, boy. Hey, listen, let's go back and catch him as he recovers his first bull. Yeah, there you be. There he is. It's a go. Holy smokes. Holy moly. I'm J.R. Tucker with the Archer's Choice, hunting with the Tulik Outfitters. Fourth day of the hunt, six caribou, all with Hoyt bows. This is my first one. Many thanks go out to Ralph and Vicky and Chad. At a way, JR, you know, facing all those tremendous, horrible conditions up in Caribou Camp, a lot of you better get used to it. Now, let's check out Chad Crayhill. Well, folks, you got to understand, Chad actually stayed behind that camera for, well, probably almost literally the whole hunt. So it's his turn, and the weather hasn't changed. That was, oh heck, he's still going. <laughs> Woo! They put us on this little island. This bull was at the other end. Just started trotting. Just came right to us. Unfortunately, he saw me. And they got a little spooked, but. All right, we got a bunch of bulls and cows coming across the ridge. Way up. I just wanted to make a commitment as to which direction they're gonna head so we know what to do. It pretty much looks like they want to veer to our left a little bit, and I think we probably can break, get over to the spruce, and cut into the notch, because they got to come across a little bay on the back side of us here. And uh, the only downside is we got the wind heading right at them. But I think we can play that right and cut it and get there. So we say we just back out this way, and we loop around, and we'll, we'll just try to push it. Look at all the antennas. Oh man. Beautiful. There's a real nice one with a bunch of points. Out front. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Oh, I saw a spider on your hat. I'm sorry. Welcome back to the Archer's Choice. Now let's continue on with Chad's hunt. Are you fit? <laughs> Good. <laughs>
one of the things that I realized up in Caribou Camp, not only, I mean, we didn't have the winds and the conditions that they did, but Caribou constantly walk. Well, I mean, Vicki, you know, everyone's got to understand that this is a migratory animal. And really, one of the only times you're ever going to see it standing still is when the weather gets warm, they go up on the high peaks and they stand there with their nose in the wind to keep the bugs off. Them. And they Otherwise, didn't have that warm weather and they yeah, had lots I mean, of wind They had rain. severe wind, rain, sleet. And I mean, this is something you're going to deal with. And folks, we want you to understand, I mean, everybody that went on this hunt they were successful. And they all tagged out. The reason we're not showing you or emphasizing some of the shots is because even though they were on target when they released, with the animal walking and the wind playing in so many factors is, yes, you know, I mean, a lot of people don't make perfect shots. We don't want to show that, but we want to tell you this. You know what the perfect shot is? We cover the animal. Watch these bulls come all the way around the end. Mark and Colin actually pushed them out around here accidentally, and we just squatted down up here, and they just kept coming. Man, I tell you what, the wind is howling. I don't know if you can probably hear it. There's white caps on the water. The wind is absolutely howling. It's raining. He didn't go 65 yards, and he's down. And it's a darn good bull. Let's go get him. Yes. Yes. This has been an awesome hunt. We have had the gamut of everything. High winds, rain, snow. I get to see my son shoot his first two big game animals on a, on a far off adventure. I see my good friend J.R. Tucker shoot his first caribou. Bill shoot his, Mark shoot his. I finally picked up my bow and 10 minutes I've got mine. I mean, this place is pretty darn incredible. I mean, this is real caribou hunting. This is walk your butt from camp, take off, hike forever, find them, stalk them, and make it happen. Hey, that was an awesome shot, Chad, and congratulations. That was good. You know, folks, if you saw that last segment, you know, my wife has been beating on me tremendously, and it's just the mental strain and now the physical abuse. Oh, my God. It, it's never going to be the same, and I mean. It's makeup. It's camel makeup, darling. Nice try, nice try. That's Freddie's idea. Freddie told hey, me to show the abuse. Let's, because, we want to thank Tudelik Outfitters for all the help and all the great planning and, and the great hunt that they had. And we want to thank all the Posse members and everyone else who was up there. Congratulations on all those bulls. And if everybody knows a really good lawyer, um, I'd like to speak with them. <clears throat> okay, okay. Anyways, so remember, we want you to come back next week, same time. Same station, and I hope I have 2020 vision by next week. <laughs> I mean, it's... Right here, on the Archer's Choice. choice.